This is a remarkably difficult GMAT Properties of Integers question. Definitely 700 plus level. Watch how I do it and I'll go slowly and explain what I'm doing in each individual circumstance. However, it does require a couple of things of us. Number one, it's knowing how to read the function. Number two, it's knowing a special GMAT trick for breaking down functions regarding consecutive even numbers. And number three, understanding relative primes. The first two I'll discuss in this video, whereas relative primes I've discussed in a different video, which I'll link to if you look at the cards in the top right hand corner. So let's get started. For every positive even integer n, the function h of n is defined to be the product of all the even integers from 2 to n inclusive. If p is the smallest prime factor of h of 100 plus 1, then p is between 2 and 10, between 10 and 20, between 20 and 30, between 30 and 40, or greater than 40. So first, let's try to figure out what this function is talking about. So h of n, we're looking at h of n is all the even integers from 2 to n inclusive. What that means is 2 times 4 times 6, etc. times n minus 2, all the way up to n minus 2 and n. So for example, if we did h of 10, that would be 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 times 10. Why am I talking about h of n when we're actually talking about h of 100 plus 1? Well, in this circumstance, I'm looking at h of 100 plus 1, okay? And I can see that because of the plus 1, we're dealing with two consecutive numbers. So we have the h of 100, which we'll have to figure out in some way. And then we have h of 100 plus 1. They're consecutive, and we're talking about factors of those numbers. So when we're talking about factors of consecutive numbers, we're almost invariably talking about relative primes. So at this point, if you don't know what relative primes are, I'd suggest that you click over to the other video. I've put the link to the video in the card above, and you can go there and learn a bit more about relative primes. But this is certainly a relative primes question because we're dealing with prime factors and two consecutive numbers. So let's take a look at h of 100 plus 1. So h of 100, we're going to have to figure out first. So that's just 2 times 4, et cetera, times 98 times 100. That number is going to be colossally large, so it's not going to be worth us calculating. But one thing that I will do, and this is a GMAT trick, is when we're dealing with functions of even numbers, I'm just going to pull the 2 out the front. So that's 2 times 49 times 50, OK? So basically, every number from 1 to 50 is a factor of h of 100. Now what we know about relative primes is any two consecutive integers must be relative primes. And relative primes share no factors except for one. So what that's telling us is that that would imply then that h of 100 and h of 100 plus 1 share no factors except for one. So what that's telling us is that, OK, well, these are the factors of h of 100. Are 2 to 50. So the factors of h of 100 that are not 1 would be the numbers 2 to 50. So the factors of h of 100 that are not 1 are going to be the numbers 2 through 50. So basically, that further implies that 2 to 50 not in h of 100 plus 1. Whatever our number is, it is going to be greater than 50. Because we know that the numbers 2 to 50 are not included in h of 100 plus 1, that implies that whatever this smallest prime factor that we're looking for is, that's going to have to be larger than 50. So of course, our answer then is greater than 40. Another way that you could look at this is basically inclusion in h of 100 implies exclusion in h of 100 plus 1. So this implies all the numbers 2 to 50. So this would imply numbers that are 51 plus. So whatever our prime factor is, it doesn't have to be 53, the next prime, or whatever. It just has to be greater than 50. So we know, of course, that our answer is greater than 40. 
If you like this video, if you found it useful, the best way to support the channel is to click like or subscribe on YouTube. And if you're interested, we have a free 28 page properties of numbers guide that discusses certain questions like this. I'll put a link in the card in the top right hand corner here where you can go ahead and download that. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.